Today we are going to be responding to the book What's So Great About Art Anyway. It's a book by Rachel Branham and today specifically we're going to be going over chapter 3 and the title is When I Draw I See Myself or How We Learn Through Drawing. The book is going to be featured here. So she starts the chapter off by going through the stages of artistic development and we're going to go through each one of them really quickly. So there's the scribble stage, there's the pre-schematic stage, followed by the schematic stage, the dawning realism stage, the pseudo-naturalistic stage, and finally a period of decision. Now these stages all come along with specific age ranges and grades, and we're going to talk about those as well as we get into um, what they each mean and what they look like in the art making classroom. So the first stage is the scribble stage. And this goes when a child is between the ages of two and four, typically. They're still figuring things out at this time. They're still young, getting used to um, tactile motions and using their hands. This is a period of when they're starting to actually make more controlled marks. You can tell they're starting to try to represent things, naming things in a picture, um, pointing out what things will mean. This is going to be the foundation that we're building on into the later years, but this is more of an exploratory stage of art making. The next stage is called the pre-schematic stage, and this is ages four through six. The text describes it specifically as when a student is beginning to use art to problem solve, figure out new concepts, and record time. That can be found on page 25 of your book. And this is a time when you look at a, the average child's art, you'll start seeing them move a little bit away from stick figures and show and draw figures more explicitly they're adding a little bit a little bit more detail nothing too specific but you're starting to see them move away from the scribble stage and start to explore more with the marks opposed to the ability to make them the third stage is the schematic stage that's ages seven through nine which is typically right in the middle of elementary school it's called schematic because it's based off of the word schema which is the definite understanding of something and that's because this is when a child is starting to demonstrate um, a conceptual understanding of things and they're using art to display that and show it on paper or through um, sculpture or anything more representational. Um, they can also show a higher understanding of space, making things larger or smaller, something that we would understand as hierarchy, um, placing things in the middle of the page, making it bigger, things like that. Um, they may not be aware of the things they're doing, but we're starting to um, see that they're making these kinds of specific decisions in their art that's going to move forward in their later years. Next is the dawning realism stage. This is ages 9 through 11, and this is when things get a little bit more serious for the children themselves. This is when they start to become a little bit more critical of their work. Um, they want to know if things look good or not good, which is directly based off of how realistic it looks, hence dawning realism. Um, they also start to understand space and shapes better, so they can more um, readily understand how their art compares to what they're looking at. Um, they also have more overlapping objects and more consistent use of um, distance and size that we saw in the previous stage. Also something you'll see in this time is um, people, uh, students or children trying to copy cartoons. That's because they're trying to match what they see and what they draw and cartoons are a more simplistic line work that they can look at directly and try to copy onto their own work. The second to last stage is the pseudo naturalistic stage. This is ages 11 through 13 which is about middle school age. This stage is still moted by naturalism, and it's uh, coupled with a more heightened and intense sense of scrutiny within a child's own work. Um, more um, complex things within their artwork will start to appear, such as use of foreshortening, shading, and perspective. Um, also, children at this age, which is a little bit more, di a little bit different, is um, they become more sensitive to symbolic representation. This can typically be seen in the use of color to show emotion. So a lot of blacks, darkening colors will show like that teen angst and like happier colors like warm reds, yellows will show like happier emotions. And when you start to see those different kinds of connections, that's when you can start to see those kinds of transition into a more conceptual mindset. Uh, a good quote I found 
in the book about the importance of this stage moving forward it was on page 28 and it said if children aren't given enough support or opportunity their creative development can weaken decreasing the likelihood of a child wanting to continue drawing and moving out of this crisis period now this is going to be important for our next stage which is completely based around getting past this period the last stage is the period of decision which is ages 14 and up and like i mentioned before this whole stage is based around the decision a child makes if they can or can't art how they feel about being creative and um, producing their own works and whether or not they want to continue art or not sometimes um, people won't move past the previous stage or this one ever just depending on if they're given the right um, opportunities and encouragement and um, this is typically where you'll start to see people rejecting art or just kind of moving away from it once they choose their specific career so next i'm going to go into a few questions um, that i was given in order to properly respond to the chapter and how it can be utilized in my art classroom and how i personally um, reflected upon this new information. If you were to ask me before reading this chapter why children make art, I would probably have given you a long-winded answer based off of a number of small experiences in my life. However, after reading this, I can kind of condense it down into, I think children make art because it's a way they explore the world, they process their findings, and how they communicate their responses to those findings to other people as well as process it within themselves. The text sums it up on page 33 in a good quote. It says, children develop understanding about the world and their own abilities through incidental learning. And I think the visual part of incidental learning is what um, drives students to explore and learn through the art making process, which can then in turn into a way to express themselves and become an outlet. Now, another thing I also think is important about why kids make art is they find joy in it. It becomes part of their play. And when they associate that kind of joy, happiness, and excitement, it can become a place of safety and escape. And I think when they move past using art as a way to explore the world, it can turn into a nice tool they can draw back on even into adulthood. And I'm gonna kick off my most important salient takeaway with my last quote from page 34. And it says, my greatest asset as a teacher is giving children the space to reconnect with their instinctual art abilities and to reinforce the idea that when you are creating, there are no mistakes, only opportunities. So that was on a page discussing how to interact with a child who is struggling with accepting their art not being the same as someone else's, but still understanding that it can still be good. And that's my most important Say, uh, salient takeaway from this chapter is understanding where children are and staying rooted in that to understand where to keep their expectations and how to motivate them to know where they should be, where they want to be, and where they want to go. The idea of no mistakes, only opportunities is a really good mantra to give your students because when they realize how low danger art making is and how there's only going up there's only getting better only creating i think it can give them a little sense of relief and understanding there's no way they can fail if they're trying i think art teachers can utilize this information as a whole as a kind of framework by understanding what stage a child is at they can know where to direct them and how to teach them i think it's important to see where a child is in terms of learning, in terms of um, how they see their own work, how they're scrutinizing their own work. And if you're not aware of where a child is developmentally, you can't focus on that stage and help them reach the next one, help them reach the fullest capacity where they are now to move on to the next stage. And when, once they get to the decision stage, understand the weight of that decision and be able to go throughout their life, even if their decision isn't art, to um, still have a positive attitude toward it. I think this information can even be used to provide a child some comfort by knowing why they are thinking these things. For example, if you have a nine-year-old who's upset that their cat doesn't look like a cat, you can know why they feel that way and that it's normal for them to be in that um, realism-seeking stage and let them know 
hey, it's okay. You're trying, you're doing your best. Just because it doesn't look exactly how it looks doesn't mean it's not good. It doesn't mean you're not a bad artist. That's just what you're looking for right now and you can work harder to get there. And I think this chapter in a whole kind of gave us as art teachers some insight into the artistic minds of our students, which we can build on in the future and only go up from here.